The sound in this video was processed by Isotope. In this video, everything you wanted to know about X5U3 microphone wireless system. What it's worth and where to get it. What's inside of the box. We'll go through all the features. Check weight and size. Open the unit. I'll show you how to use U3 and we'll check it with a microphone, acoustic guitar and other devices. We'll find out if it is compatible with U2, another wireless system from X5. We'll cover everything about battery and recharging. There are a couple of hidden features and usability issues. As always, we'll science all the shit out of it. Latency test, frequency response, noise level, headroom and wireless range tests. All around interference with multiple units running at the same time. And do you think it's gonna kill your Wi-Fi networks? You're gonna have to watch to find out. And it's all coming up right now! Hello everyone, here is Max, and in this video we're going to be looking at X-Wife U3 microphone wireless system. And let's begin with taking a quick look at the official website. So the website tells us the recommended retail price is 199 US dollars, and there's a link to Amazon right here. The unit works at 2.4 gigahertz, which means it can be used without license anywhere in the world, which is good working with XLR dynamic microphone and battery-powered condenser microphones, which means it doesn't provide phantom power, so if you're going to be using it with a condenser mic, it needs to be battery-powered. Less than 5 milliseconds latency, we're going to check that later on. Up to 90 feet, well, we'll check that as well. Applications, pretty much anywhere where XLR connectors are used. All right, let's check the stores. Amazon, first of all. And it offers the unit for $199. And that's going to be the price pretty much anywhere in the United States. Sweetwater, Musicians Friends, all for the same price, 199 US dollars. If you're in Europe, you can find it in Tommen for 199 euros, which is a little bit more than in the US. If you happen to be in the UK, you may want to take a look at Gear for Music, and you'll find it here for 175 pounds. In Russia, you'll find it at Moostork for 26,000 rubles, which is almost twice as much as anywhere else. This is insane. These guys are out of their minds. And if you're in Japan, check Sound House, where you'll find it for 20,000 yen, which is actually lower than anywhere in the world at this point. I'll give you some links to Tomon and Amazon in the description below. Alright, here's what the box looks like. And on the other side, you'll find all the same things we have already seen on the website. I mean, specs, less than 5 milliseconds latency, up to 5 hours of battery life, and stuff like that. On the other side of the box, it says, designed in the USA. I don't know if that's true, but it definitely was assembled in China. Good, let's open the box. It is a nice box, by the way, the packaging is really well done. And here's the receiver. It feels pretty solid, no screws or anything. Metal enclosure. It doesn't feel cheap at all. And here's the transmitter as well. It has this lock button and an antenna. And XLR connectors fit. That's a good sign. Okay, what else do we have here? A USB cable with two micro USB connectors. This one is for charging. As always, some poison, do not eat this. A sticker for you 3 fans. A warranty card. Nancy must be really busy going through all those emails. User manual, we'll take a closer look at this later. And some legal stuff no one's ever gonna read. And finally, my favorite, a pouch where you can keep the unit when it's not in use. Okay, let's take a closer look at the unit. We've got receiver and transmitter, and both of them have these USB ports for charging and possible firmware updates. On the other side, both of them have power switch, and the transmitter also has this sensitivity switch, so you can switch between mic or line signal. Both of them also have a channel selector button, which scrolls through channels from 1 to 6. Um, transmitter has this lock button here, such as when it is plugged into the mic, it locks in there and won't fall out. 
and apparently they both pass some quality control. Speaking of functional stuff, that's it. There's an antenna here on the transmitter and uh, an LED here on the receiver which shows us that there's a link. Okay, let's turn them on and see if they're gonna connect. The receiver is on, you can see it's on channel 2. The transmitter is on as well. And there's a green LED which tells us that there's a link. Now if I switch the channel to let's say channel 3, there is no more link, you can see that. Let's go back to channel 2. Alright, connected. Good. Let's take a quick look at the manual because there are a couple of things I wanted to mention. Well, first of all, you're not supposed to hold your mic like this, because you're going to be blocking the signal. This is the right way. So, don't do this. That's the way. The manual specifies working range of 90 feet. We're going to check that later on. As I mentioned before, the sensitivity switch controls the gain, and you can choose between 0 dB or minus 10 dB. This is interesting, charging time, we're gonna check that too. And I like this table here, which specifies what frequencies are used per channel. If you watched any of my videos, then you know I'm not a singer, I'm a guitar player. So I'm gonna be using this with my acoustic guitar that has an XLR output. But to get a more professional opinion, I gave U3 to a friend of mine who is a singer, and I've asked her for some feedback. And one of the first things she said was, that U3 makes mic feel much heavier than it actually is, and it also dramatically changes the balance of the mic. So let's check how heavy this thing actually is. Okay, transmitter would be 87 gram or 3 ounces. And the receiver is 90 gram, which is pretty much the same. A little over three ounces. But how heavy is it gonna be with the mic? Let's check it out. I have this Shure Beta 58 mic, which is a pretty standard mic, so I'll just plug the transmitter into it, and you can see it, it locks right there, such as it won't go away. So let's check this out, how heavy this combination is. 369 gram, or 13 ounces. Let's go back to gram. Okay, let's compare it to an average wireless mic. I happen to have this mic from Line 6, I'm not sure what model this is, but it feels like a regular wireless mic. So it was 368 versus 363. So they are almost the same weight, you won't feel the difference. What about the balance? Well, this doesn't really feel any different than just a regular wireless mic. They are almost the same weight and they have pretty much the same balance. So I'm guessing when my friend said the mic got heavier and the balance has changed, she didn't really compare it to a regular wireless mic, but rather to a regular mic like this. And of course, it is lighter and the balance is a little bit different. Speaking of the size, how big is U3 actually? Well, as you can see, Together with the mic, it is pretty much the same size as a regular wireless mic. It may be a little bit longer than this one, but overall it is the same size. And separately, it is just a little bigger than a regular 9 volt battery. But if you want to know for sure, I'll give you numbers. Here we go, this is the transmitter. and the receiver. Let's check how U3 units compare to standard XLR plugs. Let's begin with the transmitter. It is slightly thicker and slightly longer on the length of the antenna than the XLR plug. The same works for the receiver. 
It is slightly thicker. And approximately one inch longer than the XLR plug. You might have watched my video on XWIFE U2, which is a guitar wireless system from XWIFE. Let's check how bigger U3 is. Here it is. Well, obviously they have different shape, but altogether they're not too far from each other, speaking of size. Let's check if there's any difference in weight. Okay, U2 transmitter was 41 and U3 transmitter is 87. It's pretty much twice as much. U2 receiver 41, U3 receiver 89. Yeah, so U3 is twice as heavy. Okay, let's try to open the unit and take a look inside. Not entirely sure about it. Oh, yeah, that's it. That's the way. It's really tight inside. I have to say, it took me quite some time to figure out how to open the unit. And level of technology inside is over the top. Compared to this, any tube guitar amplifier would be a Stone Age technology. I don't have a proper screwdriver for those, but I'll try to figure something out. Yeah, those screws really gave me some trouble, but very soon they've lost the battle. Well, if you're ever gonna need new battery for U3, this is what you're looking for. And by the way, the capacity of this battery is bigger than that of XYF U2. Oh, that was easy. These screws again. Shit. April 2018. Okay, batteries are exactly the same. Tiny, tiny SMD components. Don't try this at home unless you really want to destroy your unit. And here are some close-ups. This is the receiver. You can see the DSP and A7125 is a wireless transceiver or a radio model. Here is the DA converter, which is different than the one that U2 has. And transmitter has the same DSP. And PCM1803 is the AD converter, which is the same as XYFU2 uses. XYFU3 is very easy to use. If you want to use it with a mic, Take the transmitter and plug it into the mic until you hear the click. Now plug the receiver into the mixer. Turn it on. And turn the transmitter on as well. Make sure they are on the same channel. And as soon as you see a green light, you're good to go. It is as easy as this. It is pretty much plug and play. Well, even though the box says it is a microphone wireless system, there is more than that you can do with U3. For example, you can run your acoustic guitar, if it has an XLR output, directly into a mixer without any cables. Or you can turn your PA into wireless speakers by plug-in transmitter into the mixer and receiver into the speaker. Actually, pretty much any equipment that has XLR connectors can use U3 to transmit the signal. Let's check how U3 is gonna feel with different devices. Well, you have already seen it with this mic, and I've mentioned that the balance changes a little bit, but it's no different than a balance of a regular wireless mic like this. So, what about this one? This is a standard SM57 mic. Well, U3 sticks out quite a lot, and I know for sure that some singers may not like the way it looks, because when they hold the mic, many singers prefer it to be smooth and black, just like this. So some people may feel uncomfortable with the way 
this looks. All right, let's try something else. Okay, this is two notes lick lean guitar preamp. And I don't know why would you want to run it like this, but who knows. Well, it fits. It doesn't block any other inputs or outputs. Well, you can still access this button here. It sticks out quite a lot. So it may not be the best solution for a pedal board if you know you have another pedal right next to it. Another scenario where you could be using U3 is when you want to connect your mic to your DSLR or mirrorless camera. And this is exactly what I'm going to be doing next time I'm going to Guitar Summit, Music Mesa or any other guitar-related event or exhibition. And Hose Technology happened to have a couple of different adapters and impedance transformers for exactly this situation. So I'll take this one and I plug it into the receiver. And the other side, which is a 3.5 millimeter stereo jack, goes right into my camera. This part will be taped to a camera or to a tripod. And this part will make my interviews so much easier. What about acoustic guitar? Well, I have one right here, and it has an XLR output, as you can see. So I'm gonna stick one of these transmitters right into it. And here is what it looks like. Yeah, it is pretty bulky and I can imagine that U3 probably wasn't initially meant for an acoustic guitar. But I have to say that I played a gig like this and it didn't feel particularly uncomfortable. I just had to keep in mind that there's an extra part sticking out of my guitar. You may already know that many inexpensive guitar wireless systems like U2 have problems with piezo pickups on acoustic guitars or with active pickups. This is probably happening due to plastic enclosure and lack of isolation. I found out about this after my video on U2 was already published, so this time I felt it was necessary to test U3 with an acoustic guitar. So, transmitter goes into my guitar, and receiver goes into the mixer. Let's turn them on. Okay, let's check it out. Well, as you can hear, there are no audible problems with an acoustic guitar. At least with this guitar, let me know if it works the same way with yours. More than that, I'm running two U3 systems at the same time. One for the guitar, and another one for this microphone. We've got XYFU2 and U3 wireless systems, and you may be wondering, what is the difference other than this one is supposed to be used for the guitar, and this one is for a microphone? Well, I can tell you that DSP and analog to digital converters are the same, while DA converters are different and the circuit is completely different. I was also asking myself, are these compatible? Can I use this transmitter with this receiver or this receiver with this transmitter? Let's find out. Let's turn this on, first of all. One, two, three, four. So this transmitter is on channel four, so in theory, if I turn this one on and set it to channel 4, if they were compatible, it's supposed to work. So now it's on channel 2, 3, 4, wow, no, there is no link. Okay, let's try the other way. 1, 2, 3, 4. Channel 4, again, I will turn this one on, it's on channel 2, let's turn it to channel 4. Huh. No, no link. Unfortunately, U3 is not compatible with U2. 
And here is what it looks like when there is a link. OK, now what happens if the battery suddenly runs out? Is it possible to use U3 and charge it at the same time? Let's find out. And for that, I've got a couple of power banks. And this is my favorite power bank from Harley Benton. It has two 9 volt outputs for paddles, USB output and a flashlight. Let's try to connect it to the receiver. OK, the red LED went on, which means it is charging, and I'm also speaking to you through this mic, which is connected to U3, so it works, and it is charging at the same time. If you don't have a power bank, you can also use a standard USB charger, or even something like this. It's charging. OK, now let's try to do the same thing with the transmitter. OK, this one also has a red LED, such as you can see that it is charging. So you can use it and charge it at the same time. It works. OK, it's time to check battery life. My concern about this kind of internal built-in batteries is that you cannot change them if it suddenly rounds out during the gig because you forgot to charge them. So in this situation, it's not a very reliable solution. So don't forget to charge them before every gig. Remember the box mentioned it's supposed to hold up to five hours, but I remember that battery in U2 lasted much longer, about eight hours, so I thought it was rather pessimistic estimation. So I've charged both transmitter and receiver to 100% and let them run until batteries eventually died. The receiver was the first one to stop working after nine and a half hours, which is a very, very long time. Approximately one hour before the battery runs out, the red LED goes on and it starts blinking somewhere like half an hour before the unit stops working. The transmitter stopped working an hour later after 10 and a half hours, which is incredibly long. And this time the red LED went on approximately one and a half hours before the battery ran out and it started blinking half an hour before the unit stopped working. Now that both batteries are dry, let's charge them to 100% and check how much time we're gonna need for that. I'm using this Samsung UK version travel adapter, which provides two amps. And for both transmitter and receiver, it took approximately one hour, 20 minutes to charge them completely. Very good result. It charges quicker than U2 and it lasts longer. I'm surprised. Every time I see two parts of one unit with matching plugs, I always want to know what is going to happen if I connect them to each other and turn them on, creating a loop. Well, this time I've asked the manufacturer and I was told that nothing is going to happen, that the unit is protected. Well, let's find out if it still works. One, two, two. Yeah, it still works. Very good. Another question is, what is going to happen if someone, by accident or on purpose, turns on the phantom power? Will it destroy the unit or will it still work? I know the answer, but let me show you that. You still can hear me, right? So XY U3 is phantom power protected. It is safe to use with any kind of mixer or audio interface. Phantom power will not do any harm. I used U3 at a couple of rehearsals and gigs and I found one usability issue which I'm going to show you right now. Imagine you need to go with your U3 receiver directly into the mixer, for example like this one. I have two receivers right here and notice that they have power switch on this side. So when I plug it in into channel 2, let's say, the power switch happens to be on the left side as you can see here. So if I plug another receiver right next to it, the first one is blocking all my controls, so I cannot turn it on or off or change the channel. Um, more than that, if I want to use a cable, XLR cable on channel one, that will block controls on this receiver as well. I think you would agree that every time you have, let's say, a half an hour break between sets when you play in a gig, you would normally turn your wireless units off 
in order to save batteries. And pretty much every mixer has its XLR inputs oriented this way. So with U3 system, you would need to unplug the receivers and turn them off every time you need to do that. I just wish U3 had all the switches and controls on this side, such as you can see them and easily access them while you're operating the mixer, and also a USB connector on the other side, such as it won't create a cable mess like this if you need to use it and charge it at the same time. Another problem I found with it is that you cannot put your guitar on a guitar stand while using a U3, because it is long enough that it's gonna hit the floor. Let me show you what I mean. There is no way I can put the guitar on the stand. There is a solution to it though. If you really want to use U3 with your acoustic guitar, you can use an extension cord with an angle XLR plug, which goes in here, and then the transmitter can be taped to your guitar strap. Let's measure the latency. I have already explained this procedure in my video on X5U2, so if you want to know the details, I'll give you a link to it in the description below. And now, let's go straight to the test. Let me remind you that for X5U2, the latency was 477 samples at 96 kHz, which is a little less than 5 milliseconds. Let's see if U3 is any different. 477 samples, which is exactly the same as for U2 which makes it a little less than 5 milliseconds. Is that a lot? Well, it's a little bit more than I would like it to be. It is actually very well explained in my video on XYFU2, so you may want to watch that one as well. Let's check the frequency response. As it was in the video on U2, I'm using True Selector, and I have a patch cable in the loop A and U3 transmitter and receiver in the loop B, so I can switch between them in the real time. Now let's play a white noise sample, first through a patch cable and then through the U3 to figure out the frequency response. Now the sound goes through the patch cable, and you can see all the frequencies coming through, the response is flat. Let's switch over to U3. And now you can see a cutoff at approximately 24 kHz, which means internally U3 is running at 48 kHz, just as described. Before we check the noise level, let me remind you what the numbers were for the U2, such as we can compare the newer U3 to the older U2 system. As always, the receiver is connected to R2, let's turn it on, everything is set to maximum, and the sound goes back to the sound card, and you could see the level meter on that side right there. So let's turn on the receiver, and with the receiver turned on, with the transmitter turned off, we're getting about minus 38 dBs. All right, let's turn on the transmitter. The volume is set to zero here. Okay, and we're up to minus 35, 36, 35, 36. And the output of the guitar is pretty high. Let's swap to U3. I have to use these adapters. And actually, because of these adapters, the amplitude of the signal coming through XLR plugs will be twice as low as it was with jacks. Okay, let's turn on the receiver. And look at this, this is a very high noise level, even compared to U2, minus 30 dBs. That's a lot. Okay, let's turn on the transmitter. Okay, we have a link, nothing really changed. And the output level of the guitar is lower now. Just as I mentioned, it's pretty much half of what we used to have with the U2, just because of the adapters. Let's turn this off. As you can see, U3 is noisier than U2. But here's the thing. U2 was developed for a guitar and for some high-gain stuff, like high-gain guitar sound. 
and U3 is supposed to be used with a microphone where gain levels will never be as high as they are for high gain guitar sound. So it is not that critical, although I wish the noise level for U3 was lower. Let's check if U3 has enough headroom and if it is able to take high input levels without distorting. For that I'm using my phone to play some music. It goes into this device which simply converts my mini jack input into XLR output and this cable goes to the audio interface where gain is set to zero and you will see what is happening at the level meter right there. Let's play some music and see what happens. Now the sound goes through the cable, so let's swap the cable with the U3 system. It just got louder. So if you feel that there is not enough headroom, simply flip the mic line switch into the line position to attenuate the signal. So now there is enough headroom and the sound is not distorting. To check the wireless range, I've built a couple of things, and the first part has this 3.5mm jack, which is gonna go right into my camera, and on the other side there are two receivers for U2 and U3, because we're gonna be comparing these two systems. So this is it. It's like an, an adapter. And the other part is based on a microphone stand, as you can see here. So there's a U2 transmitter on one side and U3 transmitter on the other side. They both are connected through this cable to my phone, where I can play some music. And there's a, a camera mounted on the other side, such as you can see what's going on. Alright, let's go and check the wireless range. Okay, I just pressed play. Now it's time to turn on the transmitters. U3 is on the right. And U2 is on the left. The receivers are staying where the main camera is. My starting point is this red-white pole, and I'm gonna be walking away from it with this bicycle handlebar in my hands. You're gonna hear if there will be any dropouts. And we've passed 90 feet, so far so good, but there is actually a clear line of sight. And my tests on U2 revealed that in this situation it was able to keep the connection up to 100 meters. In a real-life scenario the range is gonna be shorter, of course. meters mark. Again, this is a clear line of sight. Okay, it's time to go back. Well, if U3 can make it up to 100 meters here, I'm pretty sure it's gonna have a stable connection up to 90 feet in a more unfriendly environment. Overall, I have a feeling that U3 is a little bit more stable than U2. Let's check if it is possible to use two transmitters and one receiver set to the same wireless channel, such as you can send two mics into one input channel on the mixer. My receiver is set to channel 2, 
let's begin with this mic okay it is linked now you can hear me through this mic I'll try to turn on the other one one two 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 one two 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 one two Well, as you can see, it is not working. The receiver cannot decide which transmitter to work with. So it is impossible to use two transmitters and one receiver set to one wireless channel at the same time. Good, now let's try the opposite. What if I have one transmitter and two receivers set to exactly the same wireless channel? Will there be a link? Is it possible to send exactly the same audio signal to two separate mixers or two different inputs of the same mixer. Let's try that. My transmitter is on wireless channel 2 and my receivers are on the same channel. And as you can see, there's a link to both of them. Now I will plug them into these two channels and they are penned, one of them all the way to the left and another one all the way to the right. So let's find out if it works. I will switch to this mic right now. One, two, 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 two. So now you can hear me on the left, which means the first receiver is working. Let me plug the other one. One, two, now I'm on both sides, which means both receivers are getting the same signal from the same transmitter at the same time on the same wireless channel. Now that I unplugged the first receiver, you can hear me on the right side only. One, two, 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 two. So yeah, it works. You can use only one transmitter and send audio to two, at least two different receivers on the same wireless channel at the same time. For the interference test, I wanted to try to run as many wireless systems at the same time as possible. And right now I'm running five of them at the same time. Right now I'm speaking to you through this Line 6 V75 wireless mic, which is on channel 2 on the mixer. One, two, 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 check, 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 check. Okay? On my left, which is probably your right, I've got SM57 mic, which you can hear right now. One, two, check, 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 check. On my right, and uh, I think your left, we've got Beta 58 mic. One, two, 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 two. Two, two, check, check. These two mics running U3, XY, U3 system on channels one and three accordingly. Um, then we've got two U2 systems on the guitar. We've got direct signal out of R2 with internal cabinet simulation. I think it's going to be on this one, on channel seven, eight. <laughs> And then on channel 4, we've got an external cabinet simulation. Alright, let's try to run them all together at the same time. Central mic. Right mic. central mic again. Well, I have to say that these wireless receivers really don't like to be put this close together. So it's all about picking right wireless channels to make it all work. Two systems can run at the same time without any problems, but as soon as you add more and more and more, the more dropouts are there, the more interference is there. So it took me quite some time to make this work. But, well, it is possible. Alright, so now you can hear, you can see, you can even see these dropouts here on this mic. You can see these dropouts here on this mic and on this guitar channel from time to time. So they really don't like each other. So it's all about finding the right placement for the receivers and finding the right wireless channels to run it all simultaneously. And I can tell you what channels I'm using right now. This mic is using wireless channel 1, this mic is on channel 2, this mic is on channel 2, but this is line 6 wireless. Um, okay, this system 
is using channel 2. And this one is on channel 4. 2.4 GHz wireless systems like U2 or U3 create problems for Wi-Fi networks because they work on the same frequency. Right here you can see Wi-Fi network analyzer on my phone and there are many different Wi-Fi networks around this place. So let's turn on U3 and see what happens. A few seconds later there is no more internet in this place, so this is something you may want to consider if you're going to be using U3 near other Wi-Fi related devices. It is time for a recap, which means we're about to reach the end of this video. If you've made it this far, don't forget to write Cucumber of Wisdom in the comments. You know, to make everyone wonder what the heck this video is about. Speaking of the unit, I can only add battery life and charging time to the list of specs we have already seen on the box. Moving on to the long list of pros and cons. Ok, it's flexible and easy to use, has a long battery life, charges pretty fast over USB, foolproofed, sensitivity switch is a plus, and a shielded enclosure is an improvement compared to U2. Although higher noise level is a bad surprise. The latency could be lower, the design could be better thought through to avoid usability issues, you know my opinion on built-in batteries, and I actually expected it to be compatible with U2, that would really make sense. Altogether, it's a good unit for the price. Hey, thanks for watching this video. If you liked it, hit that subscribe button right there, and don't forget about the bell button to get notifications every time I'm posting a new video. A special thanks goes to people in the list below. Those are my patrons. If you want to say thanks, hit the button on the left and join the list. Well, that's it for now. Have a good day, and I'll see you soon.